Mr. Chairman, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as a Deputy Vice-Chancellor of the University of Cambridge, it is a considerable pleasure to welcome you to Cambridge and in many cases welcome you back to Cambridge. This year is the fourth year of the Gulf Research Meeting, a short time by many measures, yet still long enough to be consolidating the reputation of the Gulf Research Centre and its foundation. Thirteen years ago, in the year 2000, Chairman Abdulaziz Sagar founded the Gulf Research Centre. His gracious and modest welcome a few moments ago underplayed his prescience in realizing the need for scholarship and informed dialogue to emerge not about GC countries, but from within GCC countries. In the year 2000, the same year Chairman Sagar established the GRC, many think tanks around the world devoted much time and speculation about the Middle East. Many of these were formed to interpret the Middle East's impact on the rest of the world. The Foreign Policy Research Institute in the US, an institute founded to bring, quote, the insights of scholarship to bear on the development of policies that advance US national interests, end quote, summarizes what the US saw as three categories of threat that could disrupt the Arabian Gulf oil supplies. One, the overt use of force by regional hegemons armed with weapons of mass destruction. Two, domestic instability and terrorism with the Gulf states themselves. And three, conflict over the Caspian Basin's energy reserves. I quote at some length because studying the Middle East from the outside has and will be a source of immense interest. However, the Gulf Research Center gives voice to the region, giving the rest of the world a view from the inside. A year before 9-11, Dr. Abdulaziz understood the importance of a research center to paraphrase by the region and for the region. In 2010, Stuart Lang, former ambassador to Kuwait and Oman, now master of Corpus Christi College, wrote to our previous vice chancellor, Alison Richard. He and Professor Yasser Suleiman, a friend to many of you, and the founding director of the Prince Alawit bin Talan Center of Islamic Studies, proposed that the Gulf Research Center hold their annual meeting in Cambridge. I wish to pay tribute to my colleagues for having the foresight and energy to create this significant opportunity for Cambridge. In today's world, a global university must build friendships of integrity and networks that cross boundaries, both intellectual and geographical. A great university exists to promote these principles, but principles become theoretical if we do not have you your preparedness, the urgency to instigate the right debates. You have traveled, in some cases, thousands of miles to join us in Cambridge, and we honor you. I want to spend a few moments to consider what the Center and the Foundation have achieved, not simply, although partly, to pay homage to your endeavors, but also to underscore the responsibility of being an organization that is increasingly turned to, to anticipate the pressure points, to analyze what is possible, to identify the right fora for discussions, to influence decisions which change people's lives. That is what you have done over the past 13 years, but the work is far, far from complete and requires exceptional commitment, even more so than when the GRC was founded. In just four years, the Gulf Research Meeting has become the largest global forum in the world for the sharing of social science research in the Gulf region. Indeed, as some of you will be aware, in the most respected international report rankings for global think tanks, reviewing over 300 Middle East and North African entities, the Gulf Research Center and its foundation was ranked second for the third year running. This is an outstanding result 
but given the growing reputation of this gathering, I ask you to forgive me briefly while I hear the voice of my former swimming coach in my head coming up to me when I was thrilled to play second in a competition and saying to me, Jennifer, now you've tried second, how about first? The GRC consistently advocates the ideal of cooperation. In doing so, you challenge the stereotype that yours is a region that exists with fault lines of irreconcilable differences. Past meetings have drawn a different picture and purpose of the region, offering sessions as diverse as the GCC banking and financial sector, developing an agenda for security studies in the Gulf, the role of business women in the economies and societies of the Arab region, and natural resources, accountability, and democracy. As Dr. Nasir Saidi recently pointed out in Al Arabiya, the GCC region is characterized by, quote, a young, fast-growing population, liberal economic policies, a common cultural heritage, language and political framework, common economic policy objectives, diversifying their economies, job creation for nationals, and greater energy efficiency remain the goals. Anticipating this, you have established three projects with the European Commission and in doing so emphasize the importance, both geographically and historically, of Europe and the Gulf, reinvigorating long overlooked synergies in governance, a potential monetary union, and aligning legal frameworks for the 21st century. And returning to Cambridge for a moment, the university has been, since the establishment of the GRC, the leading university in Europe. Therefore, we would welcome bringing that aspect of our work together with the Gulf Research Center. Should anyone mistake this for a conference of the esoteric, I remind you what you already know, that the concept of a weapons of mass destruction free zone in the Gulf region was originally developed by the Gulf Research Center. As we sit in a concert hall in the east of England, this principle and basis for negotiation continues to make its way in conversations and associated policy initiatives in the governments of the Gulf region. Finally, as a university, we exist to build the next generation. And we only know if we have got it right if they surpass our expectations of them. The Gulf Research Center and the Foundation have established this meeting to bring together not only the most distinguished thinkers, leaders, and advocates of the region today, but those who will be so tomorrow. I thank you for this opportunity to greet you, to look forward to meeting you, and on behalf of the University of Cambridge, our wishes for a Gulf Research meeting which surpass those of the past and prepares us for the future. Thank you very much.